Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Hey, hey, we are jumping into the Mac West today. I am pumped. College football previews. Uh, we've been waiting a year. We've been waiting a year. And now we're not just on YouTube. We're on Periscope. We're on Facebook. We're on everywhere. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, any of your favorite podcast apps. Go check them out. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow me at Chris B. Giannini. You can follow the show at Winning Cures, or you can get us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Winning Cures Everything, or just make it easy on yourself. You can find everything at winningcureseverything.com. So, we've already done the Mac East. You can go back and watch that one. Today, we're doing the Mac West. They got six teams. We're rolling through all of them. Ball State, Central Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Northern Illinois, Toledo, and Western Michigan. We're jumping in. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't I can't leave out betnow.eu. They promote the show. They sponsor the show. Go check them out. Great online sports book. they got a fantastic layout. Everything's good about it. They've treated us well. They will treat you well. Betnow.eu. Promo code WINNING50. They will give you a 50% deposit bonus. Go check it out for yourself. I'm not lying to you. I, I got no reason to lie to you. I'm telling you, it's a good sports book. Great for recreational gamblers. Go check it out for yourself. Betnow.eu. You can see it actually right there at the bottom of the screen. Promo code winning50. Do that thing. Chris, we starting off a of ball state today. All right. All right. Let's jump in. Mike New went four and eight, two and ten, four and eight in his first three years. Went four and eight last year, three and five in the MAC. They returned nine offensive starters, nine defensive starters. They got 18 guys back, but they lose quarterback Riley Neal. This is basically the put-up-or-shut-up year, right? Only two underclassmen are projected starters. So they got experience across the board. The first seven games, the defense only gave up 23.9 points per game. Injuries hit them like crazy. The last five games last year, they gave up 44.4 points per game. Quarterback Drew Plitt, he replaces Neal. Started several games the last couple of years. He passed for over 1,000 yards. Ball State looks like they should be good, right? Okay. So 4-8, and 2-10, and 4-8. and eight. Keep that in your mind. I have got this team at 4-8 and eight and 3-5 and five again. Okay. They should be better than that. But, man, this is a difficult schedule. It's a difficult schedule. I don't have them even going that. I, I think 3-9, and nine, it wouldn't shock me if they were 2-10. I mean, you would think with, with – 18 starters back, we should be giving but, them more credit. But, but we, we've had the conversation before where if you're not really good, sometimes you need fresh blood coming back. Yeah. You need to change those starters out. You need somebody else to take a chance, and maybe you can block a little better. Maybe the next guy can run a little faster. Maybe the next guy can get open more, you know, catch the ball, make a tackle. I don't know. Hey, you know what? I, mean, I it's lied. kind of the way I've always I, felt. I miscalculated. I've got them at five and seven. Holy cow! I've got them We're, five. This and seven. might be the this might be the biggest discrepancy we've got on any game so far. So I'm I'm five and seven. What are you again? Three and nine, two three and ten. And, okay, that, okay. I've like, been I'm, wrong I'm, before. I'm, I'm five and seven, not, four I'm and not, four. I'm not above being wrong. Here's I've, I've got them losing to Indiana, losing to Florida Atlantic, Lane Kiffin's bunch. I've got them losing at NC State, at Northern Illinois, at Eastern Michigan. Ohio and at Western Michigan, but so I've got me, them, give me the wins. I've got them beating Miami of Ohio at Kent State, Central Michigan, Toledo, and Fordham. See, I just I think Miami of Ohio, I think Toledo are just substantially better. Toledo always does this though. Like I, Jason Candle for, and we'll get into Toledo here in a little bit. Like that team was supposed to be really good last year, and they always. They don't do what they're supposed to do, right? The offense is fantastic. The defense is terrible. It's right. been the same thing since Matt Campbell left. Uh, I like what Toledo does, and we'll get into them. But I think Ball's taking I see, game. I see Toledo. Like, I don't have Toledo having this gangbuster season either. But the difference is I think they lose to some of these better teams. I don't think they're losing to some of the – the lower end. I think the the separation of the haves and the have nots in the MAC is one of the bigger separations in all the conferences. I, I could. I could it's, see my, that. it's just my opinion. I, I think the teams that I think are good are are pretty good. Yeah, to real good. And I think the teams that are bad are 
are really bad, and they have a long way to go to, to close that gap. Yeah, no, I can believe that. Not above being that. wrong. If they win five games, that'd be awesome. So, that'd, be, that'd be great. So five and seven for me, four and four in conference. Let's save the coaching staff. They win five games. I don't think there's any reason to make a move, but it it is. I mean, it's put up or shut up, right? I they, mean, if they win two or three games, that lose that changes things, right? Yeah, if you if you win two or three games, gone. it gone. Yeah, but you win five games. Difficult you're schedule. One, you're, a game, you're a game better than last yeah, year, you, and the schedule's tough. You beat some teams you're not supposed to, like Toledo well, or They're going to have to beat some teams they're not supposed to. I that's, mean, they're going to be substantial underdogs in those games. Yeah. Now, the, the deal that, with that, the Toledo that game. mean you can't win those games. Like, we I, talk about that all the time. They they play at home September 14th against Florida Atlantic. Then they play at NC State by week at Northern Illinois at Eastern Michigan. The first time back at home in over a month, they play Toledo. Yeah. Like, I think they're going to be fired up for it. I think they can get that one done, especially with all the experience they got. But... Uh, yeah, so Ball State, I got five and seven. Uh, you've got three and nine. Is what it is. Like, there's a big difference in those two games there. Uh, let's move on. Central Michigan went one and eleven last year. Zero and eight in the conference. They returned four guys on offense, four starters on defense. Head coach uh, Joe Bonamago, which is such a fun, fun name, uh, went to ball games in his first three years. They bottomed out last year. Uh, in 2018, they had the third least returning production in the country. They went 1-11, and he got canned. And now enters Jim McElwain, fresh off of the Florida debacle and being on staff with Jim Harbaugh. I like McElwain as a coach, especially in a position where he doesn't have to worry about media. He doesn't have to worry about all – like, he's, he's just got a coach. Well, he right? didn't have to worry about media last year. Well, no, no, no. And he, I think he did fine at Florida. Like, it, he wasn't hell, at Florida it was last year, and not at Florida. It, uh, Michigan. It, at Michigan, I think he did fine at Michigan. I don't know that offense wasn't great. It it wasn't great, but it was light years better than what they had been. I don't know if it was light years better than what they have been. I thought it was light years better. I I thought I mean I, good. They, they went ten and two last year because of the defense. Like lost to uh, a a college football playoff team that went undefeated on the road, and then they lost on the road to the Big Ten champs. Like, I, I understand that. That wasn't because of the offense. And it, and it wasn't because of McElwain. Like, it, it, McElwain really didn't have a whole lot to do with I don't anything. Think, I don't think he did anything to make that team no. better last year. Uh, Central Michigan has got quarterback Quentin Dormady, a transfer from Tennessee and Houston. Eh, I mean, it, you know, he's going to be starting at quarterback, and I don't know what else they got, really. You know, I mean, they, they four guys back on offense, but they do have some experience and whatnot. But man, they were just dreadful last year. Uh, they were number thirty six in total defense last year. They were number four in the country against the pass, but they lost both of their starting cornerbacks to the NFL uh, early, actually. So uh, this is this is a difficult one for me. I think that Central Michigan has got some wins on this schedule. I've got them at four and eight. And I've got them two and six in conference. I got them. Look, I got them beating Albany, beating Akron, beating Eastern Michigan, and beating New Mexico State. Like that's that's where I think that they are right now. That I think they can win those toss up games at home. And I think a lot of that's on Jim McElwain. Like I think he can actually coach. I, I don't. I don't know if he can actually coach. I'd like to see it. I, I'll tell you what his problem was at Florida. He wasn't a great recruiter by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but the dude did make two SEC championship game appearances in a row, and they got fired in the middle of the third year. And no, the East was not great, no. but you still got to win the games. You know, he's he's good at winning close games, and I think he can do that at Central Michigan. I think it's going to take a minute for him to get some talent there and 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 do some things. Maybe maybe the transfer method is the right thing, so so they could be better. You know, I I think one and eleven, two and ten. I I, I doesn't. I just don't see much from this team. I think their two best players, they won one game last year, right? Yeah. One game. And they had two NFL players on that team. Yeah. That that were like good NFL players. Not not like day three, you know. And that was on the whatever. old head coach. But it, I'm just I'm just telling you, talent. Dudes on the field. I don't care about the coaches right now. Okay. At some point in time, dudes on the field had to put helmets on, shoulder pads, and go play football. I, I and think. And they had two really good NFL players in – a situation where they should have easily been able to win two or three, four games. They should. Have, you can win some of these coin flip games. They won none of them. 
Yeah. I don't know that Jim McElwain is the savior of that. I don't, I'm, he, I'm not listen, saying he's the in, savior. In I'm two, not going in crazy. In two years, yeah, but from one win to four wins is, is quite a bit of difference. In two years, three years, we can have a different conversation. Okay. I absolutely think he is the kind of coach that in two or three years they can be competing for the MAC. Because I okay. do think he does well when there's not a lot of pressure and no media you know, uh, responsibilities and he can just work on football. I don't know that he's a guy that can walk in the door and immediately change things. He's not that young, crazy, innovative, offensive guy that can say, we're going to flip everything on the script and don't worry about it. What we've been done in before, we're not going to do it all. Nobody's going to know this offense is coming. And, and we're going to hit him hard, we're going to hit him fast, and, and we're going to score, and we can get some wins out of our back. He's just not that guy. It's good. He's a guy that, that you can build from, which is a good thing, yeah. because what he builds I think will last. Okay. That's, yeah. that's the difference in the coaching styles, but, but I don't think it's happened in year one. Okay, I can understand that. All right, so I got him 4-8. and eight. You got him what, like 2-10? and 10? I got him 1-11. 1-11. That makes sense. Makes sense. Eastern Michigan. The Eastern Michigan Eagles – Seven and six last year, six and three in the MAC. Got five returning starters on offense, three on defense. Head coach Chris Creighton, that's my guy. Yeah, I love this guy. He he can rebuild programs. Like Eastern Michigan was a dumpster fire before he got there. Uh, he's insanely underrated. He, even though he's twenty two and forty in five years, I mean he took Eastern Michigan to a bowl game last year. That's right. He, he they went on the road and beat Purdue. He he has found a way to be able to win some ball games here. Uh, defense led the MAC with twenty two point one points per game, three hundred fifty three point eight yards per game, and the pass defense uh, one hundred fifty point two points per game. Uh, sorry, one hundred fifty two yards per game. Uh, only three starters back on defense, though. This team is tough. They are physical. They are nasty. They are well coached. Uh, quarterback Mike Glass, he was second in the MAC in passing efficiency last year. I think that says a lot about this team. They don't take major league risks. They they're not going to beat themselves. No. And in a conference like this, that will get you six, seven wins. I got them going seven and five again. Again, yep. Um, I, they're four and four in conference this year for me. I mean, they they got some tough games. But I love this team. They are disciplined and they are nasty. So I got them five and three in conference, but I still got them six and six. That's I reasonable. A, I flipped a couple of coins, and and they could easily end up seven and five. Um, that that there's just a, a couple of teams I like better that we'll get to. Yeah, and and it's it's literally coin flips, man. The difference between them, Northern Illinois, Toledo, and even Western Michigan. I I, I lump those four. I just think those four. We covered the two teams that I think are in the bottom of this part, this division. I think the other four teams, I don't know. They all play a different style of ball. Yeah. But wins and losses, I think all four of these, if you played a round robin a hundred times, I think you'd come up with a hundred different scenarios. If if he goes six and six or seven and five again, mm-hmm. he should be up for a, a bigger job, right? I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe not a power five job, but like an American job. Like at Rod Carey got the Temple job. Like I, I think that what he has done at Eastern Michigan. Oh no, it's is, remarkable. Is absolutely remarkable. It is completely underrated. Well, and here's the thing: if if he can somehow win all of those coin flips, win all three of them, yeah. And, and I mean, sweep, you go eight and four, and nine sweep and three. This division, yeah. Now you turn that in from a six and six or a seven and five to yeah. There's a big difference between that and eight and four or nine and three. I mean, that's a that's a crazy difference. Yeah. At no. which point you start getting a lot of people's attention. And the fact but that he should already have their attention anyway. Be- because I think all four of these teams, I kind of lumped them together. I I think it that means he can win this division. Yeah. I absolutely think he can win it. Do I have him winning it? No. But does that mean he can't? Oh no. I think they absolutely can win this division. Let's move on from there. Northern Illinois. The Northern Illinois Huskies, eight and six last year, six and two. The MAC champs, That's right? Came back in the MAC championship game against Buffalo, got the win. Uh, seven returning starters on offense, seven returning starters on defense. Rod Carey, he left after six years. He had two MAC titles, four division titles, fifty-two wins in six years. That's, That's a lot pretty good stuff. Uh, <laughs> new head coach Thomas Hammock, he's an alum. He comes from the Baltimore Ravens. So he comes from the NFL. He did have a college background before that. Um, the offense, though, uh, under Carey, they went from number 27 in total offense in 2016 
to number 93 in 2017. Last year, nearly bottomed out, number 124. Defense, mm. number 98 in 2016, number 26 in 17, and then number 40 in number in, uh, in 2018. Quarterback Marcus Childers, he showed flashes. The offense has a lot of experience. The offense should be better than number 124. We'll see what, uh, what Hammett can do here. I, he brought I, in the OC from DeSoto, North, uh, North South Dakota State. Yeah, okay. yeah, I believe that's right. I believe that's right. Um, so I think I think they can be better. They're gonna have to be better. But I don't. If they wanna, I don't think if they, they want to compete in the MAC, they're gonna have to be better than one twenty seven. On I don't. Teams. I don't think they're gonna go better than. Uh, I don't think they're gonna win a MAC championship this year. I, so I don't either. Okay. Uh, we're, I, we're I've got them. I've got them at six and six this year. Uh, I mean, it's just a tough schedule. At, look, you got Illinois State to open up, but I've got losses at Utah, at Nebraska, at Vanderbilt, beating Ball State, but then lost at Ohio, at Miami of Ohio, beating Akron, winning at Central Michigan, losing at Toledo, beating Eastern Michigan, beating Western Michigan, and that gets you to six and six. Like when your your home games that are toss ups, you lose the games you're supposed to lose on the road. That's right, and you get to a bowl game. Oh, yeah, that would be a successful season, I think, for Thomas Hammock in his first season. So you take their record and Mich- no, uh, Eastern Eastern Michigan's record we just covered, and you flip those. I have them seven and five. Okay, instead of six and six, I've got them. I've got them one game better. And like I said, so many of those games are coin flips here in the yeah. back. They really are. Yeah, it's and, just and we're all up in the air. To, we're early June trying to flip coins on games where there's so much turnover in some of these teams. Yeah, and or. In this case, Northern Illinois, they just have to get better at offense. Yeah. If they can write the ship on offense, they could go to be really good. Yeah, they could be really good and so long as the defense stays what it is. That, but, but I don't see the defense regressing. They brought a lot of guys back. I don't think they're going to get worse. Well, I mean, but they've got a new uh, new defensive coordinator. Like that True. was that was Kerry's defense. Like that that was the identity of his football team. Absolutely. So, yeah, you know, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens, but yeah, I've got them 6 and 6, you got them 7 and 5. Yep. That's uh, not too shabby. I think that would be a successful first year for Thomas. I mean, that's Hammett. where I think this whole top of this half of the division is. Yeah, uh, Toledo Rockets. The Toledo Rockets went seven and six last year, five and three in the MAC. They returned eight guys on offense, five guys on defense. Look, it, offense was not the problem last year, and they returned eight guys. It's never going to be the problem, it, by the way. Jason Candle, never. he's he's twenty eight and thirteen in three years. He has. They, they have to put up a ton of points in order to win. Tons of experience back on offense. Both quarterbacks from 2018. They lost uh, three all MAC wide receivers. I don't know that it matters. You are of the it, opinion that it's, it's well, and at Toledo especially. It's yeah. just one of those places where their offense is a machine, man. They they just print a new quarterback that looks the same as the old quarterback. They print new receivers that look like the old receivers. Same thing. Just crazy speed at the backfield. Just. It's yeah. just how they play. It's a, that's how they do. That's how they recruit. Tuesday and Wednesday night college football where Toledo's on just doesn't get better. It, bet the over. Always bet the over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they won four of their last five before the bowl game. The defense was number 103 against the pass, but they do return three out of five starters in the secondary. Uh, they, they bring back two guys on the defensive line. There is some hope there that they can actually progress a little bit, but... Uh, I think there's still problems with their defensive philosophy here. Like I, I, I don't think that there is enough. They, they put all of their talent on offense. I feel like they do. They and, don't feel that way. They do. Yeah. They so do. it's so I, I think what Jason Candle wants to do is is put up points, and that grabs people's attention. So, they, so you see these offenses that do this, and you notice that most of them who are just crazy high flying offenses, their defenses are either not good or they always regress. Yeah. They're on the field so much because your offense either goes three and out or they score in three seconds. Yeah. And so your defensive guys just don't have the gas to keep playing that way. That That's just the nature of the style. I don't even know that it reflects poorly on those players. It, it's just a style of play in which they, which they run. If you don't have the endurance and it's not because you're out of shape, yeah, you, I bet their defensive guys play more snaps than almost any other defensive guys in the MAC. Yeah, you might be right. You might be right. So, so that's a that's a tough thing, but it don't mean you can't win some fun football games. No, you're right about that. So they they went seven and five in the regular season last year, lost the bowl game. 
I've got them one game better than that. I've got them eight and four Ooh. this year. Okay. Uh, got them six and two so you in like the back. Them. You like? Them. I like Toledo. I like Toledo. I, 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 I think like the them. schedule sets up really well. I like them too. I got them once again. This whole thing is clustered. I got them seven and five going again. This team, I feel like every year I know exactly who they are. I know exactly what they are. Yeah, and I'm I mean, okay with that. That's true. I like consistency in my life. That's here's, all right. Here's what I've got with them. All right, I've I've got them losing at Kentucky, beating Murray State at home. Winning at Colorado State, losing to BYU, beating Western Michigan, uh, beating Bowling Green on the road, losing at Ball State, beating Eastern Michigan at home, beating Kent State at home, beating Northern Illinois at home, losing at Buffalo, and then winning at Central Michigan, and that gets you to eight and four. So the the at Buffalo at Ball State, like again Toledo, it, since Matt Campbell was there, has not been like a ten and two type of team. So. They're going to lose some Mac games somewhere. Uh, yeah, I just think they're going to lose to the really good teams. Yeah, and not to the the lower end teams that are rebuilding. And and totally feasible. But that's but that's with this type of offense and the defense being that bad. I guess this is one of those teams that they could beat anybody. I mean, they go into Kentucky yeah. and beat them, and or they could slip up and lose to Ball State. Like exactly. that's just. It just is what it is. Is what it is. All right, let's wrap up with Western Michigan. The Western Michigan Broncos went seven and six last year, went five and three in the MAC. They got eight guys coming back on offense, ten guys coming back on defense. That is eighteen returning starters Ooh. from a seven and six team, which is exactly what Ball State returned from a four and eight team. Yeah, the difference is they're a bad team. They got, they got, they got, they got. Well, I mean, it's, it's not like Western Michigan was great. Let's yeah. let's not go crazy. Okay, but we we do have a soft spot for Tim Lester. I mean, he's a Memphis guy. I was I was just about to say I'm. Go ahead. <laughs> Finish your rank. Lester, I apologize. Tim Lester, 13 and 12 in two years after PJ Fleck. Right. So obviously the foundation was built there. Taken and, over after a yeah. legend, though. And they've done okay. Uh, John Wasink returns at quarterback. Western Michigan, they were 6 and 2 before he got hurt last year. So obviously things did not go as well after he went down. Yeah. But they got him back. So long as he stays healthy, they should be pretty good. 10 starters back from a defense that finished number 57 in total D. It's really good um, at the Mac. But. They were number 106 in the country in scoring defense. So, yes, some of that might be the offense. Uh, wasn't able to get things done once the quarterback went down. I got Western Michigan at 7-5 and five this year. I think they improve a little bit. Um, but 7-5, and 5-3, five, five and three at same kind of thing. But, I mean, their schedule, again, I mean, it's it's just tough. Like, I, I've got them losing at Michigan State and at Syracuse, right? Well, then... In conference, the only games I've got them losing are at Toledo, at Ohio, and at Northern Illinois. Nothing wrong with that. Like, Abs- absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I think you could be way better and have the same record that you had last year. I think they, I think they win one of those games. I got them eight and four. I got them winning this division. I think they're the most experienced team in the country, and I think in the conference they are. I think they're the. They're the best team on this side of it. I'm going to go with... So long as John Washington actually stays age, healthy. Age and experience. Good. Oh, absolutely. You can't predict injuries now. I mean, yeah. if, if any of these guys lose... Hey, you you can't if you're talking about the Redskins. But. Well, we're not, <laughs> we're not, we're not talking, talking about right now. Um, but but I, I like experience. I like guys coming back. And I like this team. I like what they're doing. I do like that they were 6-0 and oh, you know, before he went down. And, and that's just a big deal. I call P.J. Fleck a legend. Probably gonna crap for that. And he was <laughs> he was really good. He okay? was a legend at that Bo- school. Bobby Bowden was a legend. Okay, yeah. He was, but PJ he was, Fleck was a legend at that school. He mattered, right. and he still matters. He put still. them on the map. Yes, in Absolutely. college football. So absolutely I got them eight and four I got them winning this division all right and I've got them seven and five and five and three so I've who got do you a, have winning it Toledo I've got Toledo winning they the got it you're they're your eight and four so I've got Toledo and Ohio um the, yeah and who, I got Ohio winning the I I think Ohio is really I think good they this win year. I'm telling you, Northern Illinois, Eastern Michigan, Toledo, and Western Michigan, I think are all really good. They're really different teams, which is strange. Yeah. It's not like they're all the same when I say they're all the same, but I think all their games against one another are going to be coin flips. And when they play the other side of the conference, I think the better teams over there, they're going to be coin flips. I just think these are four tough teams to beat. Yeah. No, I think I think you're exactly right. Like it's it, it's exactly what you say. It's coin flips, right? I these really teams do. are very similar. The talent is very similar on these teams. 
uh, I mean, it's it, it, this is why you watch Maction, right? I, I really like those Tuesday Wednesday night games. Yeah, Ma- Mac TV is is some of the best college football. You year. got that right. Fun to bet on, faux show. As always, share out the show. Tell your friends about us. Uh, leave some nice reviews over at Apple Podcasts. That helps the show out a whole lot. We do appreciate your support. We will see you guys again next go round. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.